Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed our story of Snoring Beauty today, which was a hilarious take on the tale of Sleeping Beauty with a dragon, which makes it all the more exciting. It was a fun story to read, and so I hope you enjoyed listening to it. We've got some fun crafts to do to go along with it, and this is our last story for Imagine Your Story for the Summer Reading of 2020, which is kind of sad. But don't worry, we've got lots of more fun things planned for the last three weeks of August. Our friend Caesar is coming along to tell us all of his favorite stories, so stick around for Caesar's picks. And then come fall, we're going to do all kinds of fun themed ideas to keep our programming going while we are still a little um, hesitant on how we're going to do our programming um, at the library. But it's fun to do it this way. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and make some crafts. And today's crafts we're going to make are going to be a fairy princess wand. How cool is that? And we've also got our very own fire breathing dragon. And he actually breathes fire. Watch. <sighs> oh, I think his little fire might be a little stuck here. Here we go. There we go. He can breathe fire on all of your fearsome knights that come to challenge him. Or maybe he's a friendly dragon. Or maybe he's a princess dragon just like the one in our story. But you can make them today with stuff that you have at home. Or you can come on down to the library where we have everything you need in prepackaged kits for you to pick up this week. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start today with our fairy wands. To do a fairy wand, you're going to need some basic items. You're going to need a straw, paper straw. You can get decorated star straws at Walmart, Target, craft stores, or grocery stores, anywhere you like. You're going to need a, a star template or just cut out a couple paper stars out of any shape that you want. You're going to need, or paper that you want, I'm sorry. You're going to need some ribbon, some colorful ribbon. You're going to want um, markers or crayons or whatever. We've also got some pretty jewels here that we're going to decorate ours with today. And maybe you want to use glitter glue. You can use glitter glue also on your stars. They just take a little bit longer to dry. And that's all you need and some glue. So the first thing you need to do to make your fairy wand is to um, cut out your stars. And you know, this is for young people who are learning how to cut. This is a great activity to learn how to come in on angles and cut around the corners and, um, and how to work on that eye hand coordination. And for your older kids that can cut, this is really good to do. You can also cut out one shape and fold it in half and cut out two at the same time if that's easier. But you're going to need two star shapes to cut out when you're all done. When you have your star shape cut out, now it's time to decorate. You can use your markers or your crayons, or maybe you like it just white and you want to add some shiny jewels to it. And I think that's what we'll do with ours today. So I picked out, since I have a blue straw, I picked out a blue jewel. And in the craft bags we have available at the library, we have a collection of jewels randomly put into the bag. So you'll have all kinds of options and choices. And I'm going to put some of these around the side. Now I have found that in my fairy wand that sometimes the jewels don't stick. You might see that this one fell off already. And they're easy enough to put back on. You just want to put more glue on them and reattach and then let them dry thoroughly. If you want to use a hot glue gun, that will make them stick better and more permanently. But for little hands, I don't recommend a hot glue gun because we don't want anybody to get burned. So I would recommend just using regular Elmer's glue or school glue. And you might want to use a good deal of it because like I said, they do fall off. And then once you get all your decorated jewels where you want them to be, if you want to add um, glitter glue for additional sparkle and shine, because this is a fairy wand, be my guess. I'd love to see how creative you guys get when you stop by the library and show me all the cool things that you've made from our crafts. I get so excited. It's fun to see how creative you all are. And we'll put our glitter glue on here. If you don't have glitter glue at home, you can make glitter glue. Just put regular glue down and then sprinkle generously with glitter but make sure that you have paper underneath it because it makes a big mess and takes forever to dry. So um, I prefer glitter glue because I don't have to worry about that. And see, we can just do our little star like that. And maybe we'll even put a little bit of gold glitter on here, a couple dots of gold glitter, just to sparkle it up a little bit. There. Now we're going to have to let that completely dry because the glitter glue takes forever to dry. But I have another one here that I did earlier that is all dry and that's what it looks like when it's finished. 
So then what you're going to want to do next is take your star and you want to flip it upside down. And you want to take your glue and you want to come all along the perimeter of your star and run lots of glue there. And then you want to put a lot of glue right here in the center because that's where your straw is going to stick. And then you want to take your straw and lay it right there on that um, little bit of glue. And then take your other star, the one that we just decorated, and lay that right on top. And I'm trying to be careful so I don't smear my glue here. But you want to press down and make sure it gets a good seal and line it up. And then let this dry thoroughly. Then the next thing you want to do is take your ribbons. And we cut our ribbons to about um, uh, almost 18 inches to 24 inches long. You can make them as long or short as you like. But it's curling ribbon, so we got a couple different colors of this. And you want to kind of line them all up so that they're all about the same length. And some of them, as you can see, are a little bit longer than others, so we're going to trim that up. So now we're all the same length of curling ribbon, just like so. And now you want to come up underneath your straw, and we want to tie these. And because it's curling ribbon, it's not really cooperative, but that's okay. Do your best. You want to make a circle and bring all three ribbons through. You can do more ribbons. You can do four or five or ten, however many you want. I just like three. And then just make a single knot. And then you're going to slide that all the way up underneath your star. This is kind of why you want it to be completely dry. Uh, my star is not completely dry right now, which is why it's a little bit more difficult. But you want to have it come up right underneath that star. And then it lays her like so. And then you want to take your scissors, and this is an adult thing, kids. Make sure you have your moms help you, because we're going to curl the ribbon. And you need to run the ribbon over the sharp end of the scissors to make it curl. And I don't want anybody getting cut, so this is an adult activity, kids. Make sure your adults help you with this part. And you just want to run that ribbon right over the sharp edge of the scissors to get it to curl. And if you don't get it to curl all the way, you can repeat it. And all the ribbon colors should do that. And so pretty soon, your ribbons will curl down and around, just like they did our pink one, and fall all the way down. Isn't that a fun, easy craft to do? So we're going to let our star ribbon dry while our star wand dry here. And I'm going to show you guys how to make a dragon now. Now this is a really fun and easy craft to do. Um, all you need is a toilet paper tube of cardboard. You can also order them on Amazon if you don't want to use toilet paper tubes. Um, and you can also take a uh, paper towel tube and cut it in half and then trim some of the edges off. You're going to need a rectangle of green or purple or blue or whatever color you want your dragon to look like um, for construction paper. This is about five inches by four inches um, long. You're going to need to cut out these little U-shaped pieces because these are going to be for his eyes. And here again too, they're about an inch and a half rectangle and we just curved the top of the rectangle to make them look like these kind of UI shapes. You're going to also need for this craft a couple pair of googly eyes. If you don't have googly eyes, you can cut out white paper and black paper and make them that way, or just use marker and crayon. Last but not least, you're going to need tissue paper. You're going to need orange, yellow, and red and white tissue paper so that we can make the flames that come out of the dragon's mouth. And of course, you're going to need glue. So the first thing you need to do for this craft is to figure out what color you want to use. In the kits that are available from the library, we've given you two choices. You can have green or purple. We went with purple in honor of our book, Snoring Beauty, because the dragon in Snoring Beauty is kind of a purplish color. Um, so we're going to give you guys the option if you want a green dragon or a purple dragon. That's why our sample one is purple, and the one I'm going to make today is green. So what we're going to do is we're going to run some glue along the edges again of our paper just like so, and then over the middle a little bit. And we're going to wrap our tube of cardboard here in the paper. And we just want to stick them on there and then gently roll. And then when you get to the point where you have that fun edge, we're going to add a little bit more glue here to make it stick. And then you're gonna to need to press and hold for just a couple minutes to get that seal really nice. 
Now, as you can see, my paper is a little bit longer than my construction paper too. And that's okay. We can take our handy dandy scissors and we can just trim it to make it even. If you like, you can also fold the, the paper over the edge on the inside. Okay, so once you have it glued, you have a nice tight seal, that's gonna be the bottom of our dragon. And we wanna flip them over and we wanna start working on our eyes. So this is where you're gonna need your U-shaped pieces. And you're going to wanna to fold up about uh, eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch fold here on the bottom of the flat end of the U piece because we have to glue these onto our dragon. And because we want them to um, fit on our dragon without falling off the rounded edge of the tube, the next step we're going to do is we're going to place a little cut right here in the middle of that fold. Um, maybe you want to do one or two cuts, it's kind of up to you. But by doing that, that gives our eyeballs the ability to bend. So you want to do that for each one, just a cut in the middle there, like so, just like that. Now you have two options here. You can flip these over and glue the eyeballs on right now, like this. Or you can glue these um, eyes onto, glue this part, the U pieces onto the tube, and then glue the eyes on later. That is entirely up to you what you like to do. You should kind of wait for the glue to dry thoroughly on these. Um, because sometimes gravity works over and the eyes kind of fall down. But for now, we're gonna just keep going. And we're gonna put glue then on these bent pieces here. And we're going to attach them. This was the bottom, remember with the seam? So we're gonna attach them to the top. And we wanna come all the way towards the back here and put them on the top. Same thing here, glue on this one, just like so. And there you have your eyes. And then the next thing we need to do is we have to put our tissue paper fire flames into our dragon's mouth. And while this glue is drying, we'll go ahead and prepare our tissue paper. And the kits that we provided, we've given you these strips of paper. They're longer than what you need them to be. You only need them to be a couple inches long. Um, but we gave you plenty in case you wanted to make multiple dragons. And so you only want them to be about two inches long and kind of want to even them all up. Maybe you want to have a lot of flames coming out of your dragon's mouth. That's a few. You can make them of various lengths if you wish. Um, if you want to have some that are longer, some that are shorter, that's fine. But when you have all your pieces of a similar length, then you want to kind of come in here and you want to make like tongues of fire, which is easy enough. You just want to cut little strips going up and down. And on some of these, if you want to kind of cut them so they're kind of pointed or angly, you can do that too. That kind of gives the idea that it is flaming. And then we'll set those off to one side and we have some more here that we can trim up. And so there's some, you really should only need about, um, two to three strips of each color total. You don't want to have too many flames in there because it kind of gets bogged down inside of his mouth. And then you want to run a bead of glue along the inside of the tube, but you don't want to do it on the bottom because gravity is going to pull the tissue paper down. So you only want to do it on the sides and on the top. So we're gonna put some glue right in here like this. Sorry, I didn't mean to take it away, but that way I can see too. And then you just want to start adding your tissue paper. You just kind of want to lay it in there and you can put it any, any color version that you want. Oh, it's sticking to my fingers. And we'll put some orange in here and we need some yellow in here. Okay. And then we're going to put a little bit more white. Try not to get your flames to stick on the inside. And some more orange and red. And you may find that you need to add a little bit more glue and that's fine, you can do that. A little bit more glue on the inside. And we'll put a little more color on the side, maybe put some yellow over here. 
and like so with the yellow. And there is the fire, the flames that are coming out. And I seem to have misplaced my pom-poms for the nose. But each kit comes with these two cute little pom-poms. And um, I think they're in various colors of red and blue and green and orange and pink and purple and all kinds of colors. And um, you only need two of the small ones. Make sure that you get the kind that aren't really big because otherwise they'll have a very big nose. You want the very small one. If you get a variety pack of pom-poms, there will be probably a dozen in there. And then you just want to pour your glue on his snout here in two spots. And again, the pom-poms are kind of hard to, um, to stick with the glue. So make sure you put a lot of glue on, about like that much. And then when you get your pom-poms, you want to place them on there and hold it. You need to count to, I don't know, 15, 20, or maybe sing the alphabet song, and that will get them to sit and hold nicely. Um, you can also, again, use a hot glue gun for this if you'd like, and that will hold that up nicely. And I just have glue all over my fingers now. So that would be your dragon when he's all said and done, and his eyes on mine are a little bit goofy here, so we're going to fold them back and get them nice. And right now there's my noseless dragon and we can blow the wind through him too, see? And he gives the impression that he is blowing fire. He's kind of cute even without a nose. If for some reason you don't have pom-poms at home and you make this without picking up the craft from the library, you don't have to use pom-poms. You can use wadded up tissue paper even. I could even do that now. We could wad up a little piece of yellow tissue paper like this and we could put that on for his nose. And another same color of it over here. So that he's got tissue paper. You can also use um, fabric. You could use buttons, anything that you like to make kind of his nostrils on his nose. And that would work too. If you're feeling really creative and you want to run some glitter glue along him to make him more decorative, as you can see in our example, she's kind of scaly. You could put scales and shapes on your dragon too. I'd love to see how creative you guys can get. On these dragons, you have to let them dry very thoroughly before you start playing with them because they will fall apart. And just like your, your um, wand, you need to make sure that it dries really, really good before you start playing with it or else you're going to lose pieces. So I hope you guys had fun with our crafts today and I look forward to seeing you guys again. Take care. Goodbye.